Hello all, we have created a complete course of videos for Business Skill Track 2. Syllabus of Track 2 includes these three topics that is Personal Mastery Working with Agility, Complex Problem Solving Capabilities and Persuasion and Influencing Skill. In this first video, we are covering the first topic of Business Skill Track 2 that is Personal Mastery Working with Agility. Before we get started, I want to let you know that in the description box, I will shortly be sharing all the links which are related to personal mastery course that are stated in this Biskill track. So stay tuned with our channel. In personal mastery, working with agility, there are several topics which includes result orientation, ownership and accountability, collaborative way of working, how to be a good team player, Developing the Cultivative Mindset Ability to work with various stakeholders Continuous Learning Culture Stress Management Agile Mindset and DevOps Mindset Let's see the definition of Personal Mastery Personal Mastery is defined as the ongoing journey of self-improvement and self-awareness to achieve personal growth and excellence Personal Mastery is knowing exactly how you think why you act the way you do being clear about your life purpose and direction and taking actions to continue learning and development. It is something that we all work for during our life journey in order to promote a meaningful, successful and more happier life. Personal mastery help you to develop being aware with your beliefs, attitudes and behavior. Additionally, it help you embrace who you are and help you to take responsibility for your behavior, attitude and thoughts. Personal mastery principles are as follows To set goal for yourself To prioritize what is more important to you To develop self-confidence and self-esteem To depend your commitment To adapt and work with change To accept harsh realities of life To let go of negativities like resentment and blame To deal with the most difficult and challenging situations there are seven pathways that enable people to practice personal mastery. First, personal vision. It is an ability to picture ourselves as the best leader we can be and work towards that with focus, determination and diligence. Personal vision gives motivation and momentum for change. Second, personal purpose. We want to understand how our lives matter, how we contribute, what our unique abilities talents and contributions are as well as the motivation behind what we do. In short, passion is fed by the purpose. Third, personal values. Those who practice personal mastery are motivated by a defined set of values that they live by in all facts of their lives. Integrity and authenticity are qualities that stem from being clear about the values you intentionally choose to maintain and changing them if they don't align. So these three vision, purpose and value are represent the fundamental pillars. The remaining four pathways can be seen as skill development sets that help you live out your values and realize your personal purpose and vision. Fourth, personal alignment. The degree to which our personal vision, purpose, values and behaviors are consistent with one another is referred to as personal alignment. Huge amount of good power and energy can be released when these conditions are closely matched and we discover the ability to renovate and reshape ourselves. Personal perception. It refers to being conscious of the specific frames of reference you use to view other people events and circumstances additionally it regards your self-identity and self-concept which is the foundation of your self-esteem six personal awareness it refers to how much you are aware of or are willing to know about yourself and your needs wants drives desire and preferences it involves being able to take a step back and analyze who you are your habits of thinking feelings and doing recognizing how this pattern affects other people and the caliber of your interactions strengthening the patterns that produce positive results for you and altering the one that don't personal transformation it is the creative ability we all have to reshape renew 
or reinvent ourselves in order to be more in line with our individual vision, values, and purpose. The ability to bridge those unavoidable gaps between personal vision and present reality is a key action element of personal mastery. The next subtopic is result orientation. A person or organization is said to be result oriented if it places more focus on the end result than the process used to produce a product or deliver a service. A four ways to become a result driven worker are includes work on projects where you can measure the results, turn everything you do into a case study, find ways to measure outcomes, improve your work style. These are some LinkedIn courses you should do to know what is delegation and to understand how to manage our work and deliver result effectively. The next subtopic is ownership and accountability. It refers to an individual's and groups accepting accountability for the effectiveness and quality of both output and outcomes of their work. These two are crucial because ownership doesn't imply perfection. It means knowing why you are doing the work and ensuring that your produ production is appropriate for its intended use. Accountability means that you will be held responsible for carrying out your work duties and responsibilities. Accountability calls for clarification and involves consequences. The strong ownership culture definition or culture accountability is being able to trust your employee to being their best work. Again, these are some LinkedIn courses. I'll soon mention this in description box. Moving to next subtopic that is collaborative ways of working. The collaboration is the process of working with one or more people to produce an output or accomplish a goal. Collaboration when employed effectively creates a strong team synergy and aids in producing results that are far superior than those that might be obtained by individuals. Employee responsibility increases as a result of collaboration and this in turn helps to boost motivation especially when teams collaborate digitally. There are some uh, communication principles to share with your team, which are as follows. Time and attention are precious resources. Practice and demonstrate active listening. Choose the best medium for your message. Check that your listener is engaged. Choose the best format for your message. Provide the background information. Don't put your teammates on the spot. Match your verbal and non-verbal communication. Be clear about what you expect. Become a meta communicator as an individual and as a team. There are top 10 most common barriers to effective team communication. These barriers everyone need to overcome. First, lack of trust. It can make effective team communication extremely challenging. Second, physical separation and lack of contact among team members. Separation and lack of contact means that communication errors and misinterpretation are more likely to occur. Third, gender differences. Fourth, information overload. Too much information in too little time specially strains communication. It takes time and attention to communicate effectively. Generational differences. Different experience and values can lead to many communication bottlenecks and errors. Sixth, Personal biases and prejudice. An employee's personal biases and prejudice may cause him or her to interpret communication in ways that are untrue or to magnify small problems so they appear to be much larger than they are. 7. Cultural diversity. Communicate and interpret communication through our own culture perspective, causing a host of communication misfires and miscues. 8. Language differences. 9. Differences in values and beliefs. 10. Noise. External noise such as conversations of other employees or background noise. Example of interior noise includes employee may have allergies, a headache, sore no muscles or other physical conditions that may be diverting attention away from speaking carefully and listening to others. The next subtopic is 
ability to work with various stakeholders. We all know that it's crucial to maintain constant communication with the stakeholders throughout the project in order to keep them updated on the status of the requirements. So always engage them in conversation and maintain contact with them. You should make a list of each stakeholder's obligations and expectations so they are clear on how much and what sort of say they will have in the requirements process and the final answer. Again, this is the LinkedIn course. You should do it. Next topic, mindset. A mindset is a set of assumptions, methods or notations held by one or more people or group of people. Additionally, your thought habits affect how you think, feel and act. It is a style of thinking about things that members of a group share or have in common to the point that it becomes a way of life. Whenever there is a big decision coming up in life, the choice that you make depends only on one thing that is your mindset. A Coral Dweck, a world-renowned psychologist, discovered this idea of mindset. Mindset is distinguished into fixed mindset that assumes or believes that the skills, creativity, intelligence and characters cannot change. On the other hand, growth mindset views failures as an opportunity to enhance the current abilities and push them further each day. In fixed mindset, people think that I am either good at it or I am not. But in other hand, in growth mindset with things, I can learn anything I want to. By just reading this uh, differences, you can understand the mindset easily. When I am frustrated, I give up. This is fixed mindset. When I am frustrated, I preserve. I don't like to be challenged. I want to challenge myself. When I fail, I am no good. When I fail, I learn. Tell me I am smart. Tell me I try hard. If you succeed, I feel threatened. If you succeed, I am inspired. My abilities determine everything. My efforts and attitude determine everything. Next subtopic is Agile Mindset. A set of values and principles that emphasize flexibility, collaboration and customer centricity in the development of products and solutions is called as Agile Mindset. Acquiring an Agile Mindset through mindful approach to each work at hand enables people and organization to anticipate issues and offer incremental solutions. Key aspects of Agile Mindset includes Customer focus, adaptability, collaboration, iterative and incremental progress, empowerment, continuous improvement, transparency. Attributes for developing an Agile Mindset includes Cognitive Agility. It refers to the ability to quickly adapt in thinking, learn and solve problems in various situations, often involving flexible thinking, creativity and adaptability. Professional and Personal Agility Professional agility involves adapting to changes in the workspace, being versatile in skills and swiftly adjusting to the new job requirements or industry shifts. It includes learning new technologies, being open to change and having a flexible mindset. Personal agility related to adaptability in daily life, managing uncertainties and being resilient in various life situations. Change agility, it refers to the ability to effectively navigate and respond to changes whether they are occur in the workspace, personal life or broader context. Social Agility It involves the ability to navigate various social situations with ease, displaying flexibility, understanding and adaptability in interactions with different individuals or groups. Communication and career networking comes under social and cognitive agility. Analytical and different thinking comes under social, cognitive and professional and personal agility. Reflection and adoption comes under social change and personal and professional agility. The last one, innovation and collaboration comes under social and change agility. Next subtopic is DevOps mindset. 
a strong handshake between development and operations known as DevOps that places an emphasis on improved communication, closer integration, and a change in perspectives. It combines continuous delivery, automation, agile, and many other concepts to assist development and operational teams to be more effective, efficient, and innovate faster and deliver higher value to business and customers. There are seven key principles for a successful DevOps culture. It includes foster a collaborative environment. Fostering a collaborative environment also involves embracing a culture shift within a business and this must start from the top down. Second, impose end-to-end -end responsibility. In DevOps, both developers and operations groups work as a team that is fully accountable for the applications from beginning to end. Third, encourage continuous improvement. DevOps places a strong focus on continuous improvement to optimize performance and cost and speed of delivery. Fourth, automate everything. True DevOps, unit teams, to support continuous integration and continuous delivery that is CI-CD pipelines through optimized processes and automation. Fifth, focus on customer's need to strive for continuous improvement uh, with high cycle rates and the ability to immediately respond to customer feedbacks. Brand must utilize automated processes. Sixth, embrace failure and learn from it Unite teams and expertise. Automation is a key step towards CI-CD or the ability to rapidly release new software to your customers. So these are the seven key principles of successful DevOps culture. More DevOps culture principles include change is good, tools, transparency, rewarding good behaviors, grass root innovation, accountability, no blame, Embrace failures, trust, collaboration, honesty and openness, and communication. Next topic is developing the cultivative mindset. It refers to cultivating a specific approach and attitude when interacting with others, especially in a professional or advisory capacity. These mindsets emphasize the qualities of empathy and a willingness to understand and meet the needs and goals of the individuals or organizations you are working with. Here are key elements of developing a cultivative mindset. First, active listening. A cultivative mindset involves actively listening to the concern, objectives and challenges of the people you are engaging with. Second, empathy. Empathy is a central component of cultivative mindset. It involves the ability to put yourself in the other person's place to understand their emotions and to show that you genuinely care about their well-being and success. Building relationships. This mindset focuses on building strong and long-lasting relationships with clients, colleagues or anyone you are advising. Problem solving. Being cultivative means actively engaging in problem solving and helping others find solution to their challenges. Patience. Developing a cultivative mindset often requires patience. It may take time to truly understand the needs and challenges of those you are working with and it can be a journey of mutual discovery. Adaptability. You must be willing to adjust your approach and strategies as the situation evolves or as new information becomes available. Result oriented. It's not just about providing advice, but also about following us, measuring progress and adjusting strategies as needed to ensure success. Continuous learning. Being cultivative also involves a commitment to ongoing learning and self-improvement. Stay informed about industry trends, best practices and new technologies. Transparency. Maintaining openness and honesty is a fundamental aspect of cultivating mindset. Stress management. Stress management in business is a crucial skill for professionals and leaders. It involves the ability to recognize 
cope with and mitigate stress in a work workspace setting effectively managing stress can lead to improved productivity well being and overall success in the business world key aspects of stress management in business skill includes self awareness the first step in managing stress is to be aware of your own stressness and how they affect you second time management effective time management can significantly reduce stress prioritize task set clear goals and create a structured schedule work life balance striking a healthy balance between work and personal life is essential for stress management effective communication clear and open communication is crucial for managing stress in a team or organization delegation recognize that you cannot do anything on your own delegate task and responsibilities to capable team members to share the workload and reduce stress problem solving develop problem solving skills to address the root cause of stress resilience resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks and adapt the change mindfulness and relaxation techniques practices such as mindfulness meditation deep breathing exercises and relaxation techniques can help reduce stress levels physical health a healthy life cycle including regular exercises a balanced diet and adequate sleep can strengthen your body's ability to cope with stress support system seek support from colleagues friends or a mentor when facing challenging situation continuous learning stay updated on stress management strategies and techniques attend workshop or training sessions related to stress management positive organization culture foster a positive and supportive organizational culture next topic is continuous learning culture a continuous learning culture often referred to as a culture of learning is a workplace environment where learning and professional development are not viewed as isolated events or occasional activities but are integrated into the daily operations and values of the organization in continuous learning culture employees the five steps to developing a continuous learning cultures are create a mindset that is open to growth teach people how to give great feedback introduce 360 360 degree development reviews set learning goals within teams start a peer to peer coaching ecosystem in a continuous learning culture employees teams and the organization as a whole are committed to ongoing lifelong learning and improvement next sub topic is how to be a good team player being a good team player in a business business setting is a valuable skill that can lead to a more productive and harmonious work environment here are some key strategies and qualities to cultivate in order to be a effective team player active listening willingness to collaborate support and encouragement respect for differences and time celebrate team success positive attitude admit mistakes problem solving mentor and be mentored own your responsibilities focus on team goals so these are some qualities that everyone needs to acquire in themselves to be a good team player welcome back to form fully in this video we are going to see the second topic of business skill track 2 that is complex problem solving capabilities the complex problem solving capabilities has below topics problem solving process analytical and creative skills framing the problem multi dimensional approach holistic approach and inventing options let's see the problem solving process first the definition of problem solving a problem is a question or situation that presents doubt confusion or difficulty problem solving is the process of thinking strategically and action in situation when there are no pre-made answers 
problem solving is the process of finding solutions to complex ambiguous or challenging issues or situations it involves identifying a problem understanding its nature brainstorming potential solutions evaluating those solutions and implementing the most effective one problem solving skills involves critical thinking logical reasoning creativity and the ability to analyze situations from different perspective next is a framework for problem solving creating a structured framework for problem solving can significantly enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of addressing various issues let's see a widely used problem solving framework that can be adapted to suit different situations first define the problem it involves identification of problem clearly articulate and understand the problem what is the issue or challenges that needs to be addressed ensure the problem is well defined and specific second analyze the problem here we gather information and analyze it involves data collection collect all relevant data and information related to the problem next evaluation analyze and assess the gathered information to understand the problem comprehensively third identify potential solutions this involves brainstorming encourage creative thinking and generate multiple potential solutions gather inputs from individuals with varying expertise and viewpoints to explore different angles assess each potential solutions feasibility potential impact cost and time required for implementation fourth choose the best solution choose the most suitable solution based on the evaluation develop a detailed plan outlining the step for implementation resource allocation and timelines fifth plan action put the chosen solution into action according to the outline plan sixth implement solution and review progress assess the outcomes of the implemented solution against the initial problem regularly monitor the progress and make adjustment as needed analyze what worked and what didn't seeking lessons from uh, the problem and use the learning to refine processes or approaches for future problem solving and dos so this is the overall framework this framework offers a structured and systematic approach to problem solving there are six ways to enhance your problem solving skills effectively when you understand the different steps to solve a problem you will be able to come up with a great solutions first way focus on the solution not the problem here you have to focus more on solution than the problem move your focus to a solution oriented mindset where you keep fixed on what the answer could be rather than lingering on what went wrong and whose fault it is second adapt five ways to clearly define the problem five ways is a problem solving framework technique which involves repeatedly asking the question why to help you get to the root cause of a problem third simplify things remove all the details and go back to the basics try looking for really easy and obvious solution fourth list out as many solutions as possible fifth think laterally change the direction of your thoughts by thinking laterally try to change your approach and look at things in a new way sixth use language that creates possibility lead your thinking with phrases like what if and imagine if these terms open up your brains to think creatively and encourage solutions next is problem solving styles there are three problem solving styles mentioned here idealist activist realist let's see uh, this three styles one by one idealist the idealist takes a holistic view they tends to focus on the big picture and seeks innovative forward thinking solutions they welcome a broad range of perspectives seeks the ideal solutions they interested in values idealist are driven by values and ideas they prioritize principles and ethical considerations in their problem solving they are respective of others idea idealist are motivated by the desire to help people and make a positive impact on society or communities they sees data and theory of equal values second is activist the activist takes a diverse view activists are highly action focused and prefers hands on immediate solutions they look for whatever works they prioritize pragmatic solutions and makes use of available resources to address issues effectively they seeks the shortest route to solution they are result oriented they aim for quick results and tangible outcomes activist is interested in innovation is adaptive activist accept any data or theory that gets us there third is realist 
The realist takes a sensible view. Realists are known for their practical, analytical and logical approach to problem solving. They rely on facts and experts opinion. They do fact based decision making. They rely on evidence, data and facts to guide their problem solving process. They seek solutions that meet current needs. Realist is interested in concrete results. They maintain a balanced perspective, taking into account various viewpoints. Realist is corrective, takes data over theory. They prefer they prefer tried and tested solutions. So these are the three problem solving styles. Understanding these problem solving styles can be beneficial in group settings or collaboration as it allows individuals to recognize and appreciate diverse approach to problem solving and can lead to more comprehensive and effective solutions through a blend of different perspectives and methods. Next is problem solving strategies. It includes algorithms. An algorithm is a step by step procedure by following certain rules produces a solution algorithm can be used to help identify individuals with a greater risk of mental health issues but sometimes detecting patterns can be incredibly time consuming second heuristics heuristics are shortcut strategy that people can use to solve a problem at hand these rule of thumb approaches allows you to simplify complex problems reducing total number of possible solutions to a more manageable set third trial and error this approach uh, to problem solving involves trying a number of potential solutions to a particular issue then ruling out those that do not work this can be good strategy to use if you have a limited number of solutions available fourth insights in some cases the solution to a problem can appear as a sudden insight insight can occur when the problem is in front of you is similar to an issue that you have dealt with in the past how to apply problem solving strategies in real life create a flow chart make a flow chart of each potential solution its consequences and what happens next recall your past experiences when a problem needs to be solved quickly heuristics may be a better approach think back to when you faced a similar issue then use your knowledge and experience to choose the best option available start trying potential solutions if your options are limited start trying them one by one to see which solution is best for achieving your desired goal if a particular solution doesn't work move on to the next take some time alone since insight is often achieved when you are alone cut out time to be by yourself for a while obstacles to problem solving assumptions when dealing with a problem people can make assumptions about the constraints and obstacles that prevent certain solutions thus they may not even try some potential options functional fixedness this term refers to the tendency to view problems only in their customary manner functional fixedness prevents people from fully seeing all of the different options that might be available to find a solution irrelevant or misleading information when trying to solve a problem it's important to distinguish between information that is relevant to the issue and irrelevant data that can lead to faulty solutions the more complex the problem the easier it is to focus on misleading or irrelevant information mental set a mental set is a tendency to only use solutions that have worked in the past rather than looking for alternative ideas a mental set can work as a heuristic making it a useful useful problem solving tool however mental sets can also lead to inflexibility making it more difficult to find effective solutions how to improve your problem solving skills recognize that a problem exists if you are facing a problem there are generally signs for instance if you have a mental illness you may experience excessive fear or sadness mood changes and changes in sleeping or eating habits recognizing these signs can help you realize that an issue exists decide to solve the problem make a conscious decision to solve the issue at hand commit to yourself that you will go through the steps necessary to find a solution seek to fully understand the issue analyze the problem you face looking at it from all sides if your problem is relationship related for instance how the other person may be interpreting the issue you might also consider how your actions might be contributing to the solution to the situation research potential options using the problem solving strategies mentioned research potential options make a list of options then consider each one individually 
what are some pros and cons of taking the available routes what would you need to do to make them happen take action select the best solution possible and take action action is one of the step required for change so go through the motion needed to resolve the issue try another option if needed if the solution you chose didn't work don't give up either go through the problem solving process again or simply try another option next is biases in problem solving biases play a significant role in problem solving affecting how individuals perceive analyze and address problems here are several cognitive and motivational biases that impacts problem solving cognitive biases includes action bias these biases implies individual towards taking action even when inaction might be the better choice it can lead to hasty decisions or premature actions rather than a more thoughtful approach confirmation bias these biases involve seeking or interpreting information in a way that confirms pre-existing beliefs or hypotheses it might lead individuals to ignore or undervalue information that contradicts their existing views association bias these bias occurs when individuals link to unrelated things due to their mental association even when there is no logical connection these can impact problem solving by leading to false correlation or assumptions lasting cognitive bias sunk cost bias these bias involves making decisions based on past investments rather than considering the future outcomes objectively it can prevent people from abandoning a failing approach or project because they have already invested resources in it on other hand a motivational bias includes self enhancement these bias involves the tendency to view oneself in a more positive light often leading to overestimating one's ability or the quality of one's contribution to solving a problem cooperation bias these bias might lead individuals to favor solution that promote harmony or cooperation within a group potentially at the expenses of more effective but less popular solutions need for closure this bias refers to the desire for quick solutions and closure which in which might lead individuals to settle for the first reasonable solution rather than considering multiple options thoroughly accountability this bias involves making decision or solving problems while considering the fear or avoidance of being held accountable for the outcome it might lead individuals to make decision than minimizing personal responsibility even if those decisions are not most effective so the recognizing of these biases allows individual or team to implement strategies to mitigate their influence techniques like considering alternative perspective gathering diverse option gathering diverse opinions encouraging critical thinking and structuring decision making processes to account for biases can help in overcoming the limitations imposed by biases during problem solving here are some problem solving and problem analysis tools you can check it out in google next is analytical skills the ability to collect visualize and analyze information in order to perceive the larger picture or trend underlying facts and make judgments about what to do next is known as analytical thinking or analytical skills in business analytical abilities are necessary for obtaining information resolving complicated issues and coming to logical conclusions these abilities enables the evaluation of both easy and difficult situations Analytical thinking helps individuals make informed decisions and solve problems by examining situations from various angles, recognizing patterns, and utilizing structured and methodical approach to address challenges. The key aspects of analytical skills include critical thinking, decision making, attention to details, and researching skills. Next topic is critical thinking. The critical thinking is the ability to think clearly and rationally, understanding the logical connection between ideas. It surrounds the capacity for thoughtful and self-reliant thinking. The key aspects of critical thinking skills include analysis, the capacity to examine information, identify components, and discern relationship between them, reasoning, using logic and evidence to draw conclusions, considering various viewpoints and recognizing biases, problem solving, developing solutions to complex issues by considering different approaches and weighing potential outcome, creativity, thinking out of the box, proposing innovative ideas and applying unconventional approaches to problem solving 
effective communication presenting ideas findings and solutions clearly next topic is creative thinking creative thinking is the ability to view at things with a fresh perspective from a different angle in order to come up with the new ideas it refers to the ability to generate innovative ideas explore unique perspective and devise original solutions to problems or challenges it involves out of the box thinking encouraging unconventional original and imaginative ideas that might not have been considered initially exploration of possibilities examining diverse approaches and viewpoints even those that may seem unusual or unexpected problem exploration considering problems from various angles and proposing novel solutions often diverging from conventional methods flexibility adapting to changing situations and being open to exploring alternative paths or ideas innovation introducing new concepts products or methods that changing the statue and bring about change so uh, these are some parts of uh, creative thinking creative thinking allows individuals to break away from routine thinking pattern and foster innovative solutions and fresh perspectives next topic is framing the problem framing the problem refers to the process of defining and structuring a problem or challenges in a way that helps facilitate its understanding analysis and resolution it involves breaking down a complex issue into its essential elements and setting a clear context for for problem solving key aspects of framing a problem includes identifying the issue understanding and clearly defining the problem at hand including its underlying causes scope and impact defining objectives establishing specific goals or outcomes that needs to be achieved or addressed through problem solving determining boundaries setting limitations or patterns within which the problem is to be addressed helping to focus efforts and resources considering multiple perspectives acknowledging diverse viewpoints and factors that might influence or contribute to the problem refining problem statements revisiting and refining problem statements to ensure they accurately represent the core issue and its complexity so the framing the problem effectively is crucial as it influences the direction of problem solving efforts and impacts the quality of solutions it helps in identifying the root cause evaluating alternative approaches and guiding the decision making process towards resolving the issue moving to next topic that is inventing options The process of inventing options is a critical step in problem solving that involves generating and exploring various potential solutions or alternatives to address a problem or opportunity. It includes creative ideation, encouraging brainstorming and creative thinking to produce a range of innovative ideas and potential solutions. Diverse perspectives, considering a variety of viewpoints, approaches or strategies that could lead to different solutions. Exploration of alternatives generating multiple options that may vary in complexity flexibility feasibility and potential impact combining and refining ideas identifying common themes or potential synergies among different options to create enhance or refine solutions flexibility in thinking remaining open minded and exploring unconventional or unexpected solutions to generate a broad array of alternatives So the inventing options is a crucial phase that enables individuals or teams to move beyond traditional or limited thinking patterns fostering a range of potential options potential solutions to a problem this stage often precedes the evaluation and selection of the most viable or optimal solutions among the generated alternatives next is multidimensional approach A multidimensional approach involves analyzing a situation, problem or concept from various angles or dimensions, considering multiple factors that contributes to a complex issues. It encompasses consideration of multiple factors, taking into account various elements, perspectives or variables that influence or relate to the issue at hand. Interdisciplinary analysis, using insights from different fields or disciplines to gain a comprehensive understanding of the problem. Holistic examination Viewing the problem in its entirety, acknowledging the interconnectedness, interconnectedness of different components, exploration of impacts, evaluating how the issue affects different stakeholders, systems, or environments, comprehensive understanding, seeking a well-rounded comprehension of the problem by by accessing its multifactored nature. So a multidimensional approach allows for a deeper and more comprehensive understanding of complex issues 
providing a broader perspective and helping in devising more informed and effective solutions design thinking design thinking is a problem solving and innovation methodology that emphasizes a human centered approach for creating solutions it involves a structured process to identify and address challenges aiming to develop innovative solutions design thinking encourages collaboration creativity and a user centric approach to problem solving the key components of design thinking includes empathy understanding and emphasizing with the needs emotions and experience of the end users or stakeholders affected by the problem define clearly define the problem or challenges through in depth research and analysis of user needs and insights ideation generating diverse ideas and potential solutions creating creativity and exploring unconventional approaches prototyping creating tangible representation or prototypes of potential solutions to test and refute and refine ideas testing gathering feedback and testing prototypes with end user to, to assess and refine the proposed solution iterative process embracing an iterative process that involves continuous refining and improving solutions based on feedbacks and testing so these are the key components of design thinking design thinking widely used in various fields from product design and innovation to service development to create solutions that genuinely address users needs and challenges last topic is holistic approach a holistic approach involves considering a system problem or concept as a whole recognizing the interconnections and interdependencies between its various parts in short the holistic approach involves looking at the problem as a whole and viewing the big picture the key aspects of holistic approach includes comprehensive perspective viewing a situation in its entirety acknowledging the interconnectedness of its components and how they influence each other consideration of multiple factors recognizing the impact of various elements such as social cultural environmental and economical factors on the overall system integrated analysis emphasizing the relationship between different parts of the system and understanding how changes in one area may affect other aspects interdisciplinary understanding drawing insights from different disciplines to gain a more complete understanding of the issue emphasize on wellness focusing not only on treating systems but also on fostering overall well-being and balance in the system interconnectedness understanding that all elements within a system are interconnected and have an impact on each other so uh, this is the overall holistic aspects hello all welcome to form fully in this video you will see the third topic of business skill track 2 syllabus that is persuasion and influencing skills this topic is explained through few sub topics which are building blocks of trust understanding persuasive technique principle of influence building reciprocity storytelling negotiation skills handling conflict customer conservations interviewing skills building trust the first step to any successful conversation is the ability to build a sense of trust building trust is an essential in various aspects of life whether it's in personal relationship professional settings or within communities trust forms the foundation for effective communication collaboration and cooperation there are some key strategies for building trust which is useful to view trust as a natural response to certain qualities in person group or organization first one reliability and dependability trust is fostered by individual or groups who keep their words and carry out their obligations transparency when people are unaware of a new development they often make negative assumptions because they are afraid of the unknown when individuals communicate their ideas emotions and concern to one another or when an organization usually through its leader tells its members what is going on everyone knows where they stand and trust can flourish flourish competency competency is another essential component in developing trust you cannot trust someone an organization or a leader if you believe they are incapable of carrying their duties therefore if someone can't keep their words they will never be able to earn our trust 
sincerity authenticity and congruency people can often sense when someone says something that is not aligned with uh, what they are feeling inside fairness some people don't really listen to or respect other people's wants and their desire or they act as true they don't matter in relationship where one person dominates or in a workspace where the firm or leader receives all the attention trust cannot develop building trust in the workspace is crucial for fostering a positive and productive work environment trust is the foundation of effective collaboration communication and teamwork here are some strategies to build trust in the workspace communication be transparent and open in your communication actively listen to your team members show empathy and understanding and encourage open dialogues provide regular updates on project progress changes and any relevant information consistency be consistent in your actions and decision making inconsistency can lead to confusion and erode trust follow through on commitments and promises reliability demonstrate reliability by meeting deadlines and delivering high quality work consistently if challenges arise communicate productively and find solutions competence demonstrate competence in your role continuous learning and improvement contribute to the perception of reliability and capability provide opportunities for professional development of the team inclusivity foster an inclusive environment where all team members feel valued and heard different view points can lead to better decision making so always encourage the thoughts and perspectives of other accountability take responsibility for your actions both success and failures encourage a culture of accountability within the team when mistakes happens focus on learning and improvement rather than blame recognition acknowledge and appreciate the efforts and achievements of team members celebrate success collaborate collectively reinforcing a positive team culture empowerment empower team members by trusting them with responsibilities and decision making conflict resolution address conflicts openly and constructively encourage resolution through dialogues and understanding implement effective conflict resolution mechanisms to prevent lingering issues team building engage in team building activities that foster trust and collaboration What are some key strategies for building trust in the workspace leveraging trust in the workspace is an essential for achieving various positive outcomes including improved collaboration higher employee morale and increased productivity there are some ways to leverage trust in the work environment which are delegate responsibility open communication collaboration flexibility innovation recognition and rewards professional development empowerment conflict resolution feedback culture consistent leadership crisis management emotional intelligence and celebrating diversity next topic is understanding persuasive techniques persuasion is an art of influencing others to adapt a certain belief attitude or behavior various techniques can be employed to effectively persuade individuals or groups the common uh, persuasion techniques include reciprocity people tend to feel obligated to return favors by providing something of value first you increase the likelihood of receiving cooperation in return scarcity create a sense of scarcity or limited availability to increase the perceived value of a product or idea authority people are more likely to be persuaded by those who are perceived as expert or authorities in a particular field consistency encourage small commitments or actions that aligned with your ultimate goal once people commit to something they are more likely to remain consistent with their commitments social proof 
show evidence that others especially those similar to the target audience have adapted the desired behavior or belief liking build rapport and establish a connection with your audience people are more likely to be persuaded by those they like and find similar to themselves emotional appeal appeal to the emotions of your audience creating an emotional connection can make your message more memorable and persuasive contrast uh, principles present your request or proposal in a way that highlights its favorable aspects by contrasting it with least favorable alternatives storytelling frame your message in the form of compelling story stories can captivate attention evoke emotions and make your message more relatable questioning ask thought provoking questions that lead your audience to consider your per- perspective credibility building establish and enhance your credibility by showcasing relevant achievements and qualifications or endorsement anchoring introduce a high or low initial initial offer or price to anchor the audience perceptions foot in the door technique begin with a small request or commitment before making a larger request once someone agreed to a small task they are more likely to come pay with a larger one fair appeals highlight potential negative consequences or danger association with with not adapting your proposal humor use humor to make your message more enjoyable and memorable people are more likely to be persuaded when they are in a positive and prospective and respective state so these are some common persuasion techniques next topic is aristotle's modes of persuasion aristotle is the greek uh, philosopher who introduced the concept of three modes of persuasion three uh, these modes also known as uh, historical appeals are strategies that speaker or writer used to persuade an audience the three modes of persuasions are ethos pathos and logos let's see one by one each modes ethos ethos refers to the ethical appeal or credibility of the speaker or writer it involves establishing trust and authority with the audience the ways to establish ethos include demonstrating expertise in the subject matter citing credible sources and authorities highlighting personal experience and qualifications emphasizing shared values and common ground with the audience second one is pathos pathos is the appeal to the emotions of the audience it involves evoking feelings and creating an emotional connection to sway the audience opinion techniques to appeal to pathos include using vivid and emotional language telling compelling stories that elicit empathy incorporating sensory details and imagery eliciting sympathy or compassion for a cause third one logos logic logos involves the use of logical reasoning and evidence to persuade the audience it focuses on presenting a well structured and reasoned argument methods to employ logos include providing data statistics and factual information using logical reasoning and clear rational arguments offering examples and apology to support claims organizing information in a logical and coherent manner so aristotle believed that effective persuasion often involves a combination of these three modes a persuasive message according to him should have a strong ethical foundation appeal to the emotions and present a logical argument next topic is principle of influence persuasion is ethically winning the heart and mind of your target in other hand influence is the ability to affect the manner of thinking of another if persuasion is an action influence is a state or condition the ability to influence others is often a crucial factor that determines professional successful understanding how you influence others is an important step 
as it identifies areas for potential improvement the principle of influence are psychological concept that describes how people are persuaded and or influenced in various situations the key principle of influence includes reciprocity commitment and consistency social proof authority liking and scarcity moving to next topic influencing styles influence is the ability to personally affect the actions decisions and opinions or thinking of others how you are being able to influence in your workspace may require a variety of styles depending on the situation by research the successful leaders typically use five influencing styles that is bridging people who use bridging style of influence tend to motivate by using reciprocity consultation and personal relationship second one rationalizing people with the rationalizing influencing style tend to use logic and reasoning to try to persuade others asserting those with a an asserting influencing style tend to use authority and assurance as their way of motivating others inspiring those with an inspiring influencing style use examples to motivate others the inspiring style focuses on motivating and mobilizing others through a compelling vision or emotional appeal negotiating people with a negotiating influencing style tend to search for a middle ground as a way to motivate others it involves finding mutual acceptance solutions through decisions compromise and collaboration so it's worth nothing that these styles may not mutually exclusive and individuals often employ a combination of them based on context next one is building reciprocity building reciprocity is a key aspect of effective influence and relationship building reciprocity is the principle of giving and receiving when someone does something for you you naturally feel a sense of obligation to return the favor here are some strategies for building reciprocity offer help and support give without expecting immediate return be thoughtful and considerate share information and resources express gratitude build trust and credibility create win win situation be attentive and listen actively maintain consistency remember that reciprocity is most effective when it is genuine and not perceived a uh, manipulative moving to the next topic that is storytelling storytelling is an artistic means of conveying feelings into a given circumstances the essence of a great story is its ability to make you forget your worries your problems even your pain a story can help you open your imagination transport you to a mystical and enthralling new world stories continue to be means for storyteller to express their own mentalities and behavioral pattern so that the listener can identify with the identity of the message storytelling techniques it is a powerful communication tool that can captivate an audience convey complex information and evoke emotions there are some uh, storytelling techniques to enhance your narrative hook the audience with a strong beginning start with a compelling hook to grab the audience attention establish a clear structure organize your story with clear beginning middle and end create relatable characters develop characters that the audience can connect with use descriptive language paint a vivid picture with descriptive language build tension and suspense keep the audience engaged by gradually building tension or suspense include conflicts and resolution every compelling story has a central conflict that needs resolution eject uh, emotions connect with your audience on in, on an emotional level share experiences feelings and perspectives that resonate with the audience's own emotions vary your pace mix up the pacing of your story to maintain interest speed up during action scenes and slow down for moments of reflections or emotions use dialogue effectively dialogue add authenticity to your story build empathy help your audience audience emphasize with your characters by revealing their vulnerability struggles or personal growth 
incorporate a surprise or twist keep the audience on their toes by incorporating unexpected twist or surprises conclude with impact end your story with a strong and memorable conclusion it could be a lesson learned a reflection or a call to action so these are some storytelling techniques remember that effective storytelling is a skill that improves with practice next topic is negotiation skills negotiations are formal discussions between people reaching a common ground they have different uh, intentions during which they come to an agreement eliminating their differences negotiation is just another form of communication a means of problem solving when it comes to business negotiation has become one of the most important skills and ability there must be meaningful give and take that should happen in negotiation however the most negotiation skills are crucial in business as they allow individuals to reach mutual beneficial agreement resolve conflicts and navigate complex situations effective negotiation will be both competing as well as collaborating negotiation types there are two type of negotiations that are distributive negotiations and integrative negotiations let's understand both the types deeply distributive means a giving out or scattering of value in a distributive negotiation no prior relationship is typically required before discussion begins it's also improbable that a long term connection will blossom example buying or selling a car or a house are two common instances buying goods or services is a basic form of business in other hand the word integrative means to join several parts into a whole integration implies cooperation or a joining of forces to achieve something together it usually involves a higher degree of trust and a forming of relationship Integrative negotiation are future focused with long term relationship in mind. The distributive bargaining basics include play your cards close to your chest, give little or no information to the other side, the less the other negotiator knows about our interest, the better our positions. The opposite is equally true. Try to obtain as much information from the other side as you can. Any further information uncovered is potentially leveraged to negotiate a better deal. Let the other side know you have the options. The only information we should reveal is the fact we have options. Make the offer. Make the first offer. Whatever the first offer is will generally act as a negotiation act. Be realistic. being too greedy or too stingy will likely result as no agreement so keep expectations realistic now the integrative negotiation uh, basics include multiple issues integrative negotiations usually involves many issues that are up for decisions each side wants to get something of value while trading something of lesser value sharing to understand each other situations both sides should share as much information as possible this helps each side understand the other's interest problem solving find solutions to each other's problems for example offer something valuable to the other side that is of lesser value to you bridge building more and more businesses are engaging in long term relationships relationship offer greater security and the promise of future success 15 ways to level up negotiation skills are discover the other person's interest don't be adversarial believe in the value you bring study and practice always ask for more find out what's really possible stay on the top of the latest tactics role play the other side conquer your fear first make more eye contact Remember negotiation aren't personal know what you are willing to lose be a good listener make it a conversation manage yourself first next topic is handling conflict handling conflict is an essential skill in both personal and professional settings conflict is a natural part of human interaction and how it is managed can significantly impact relationships and outcomes 
most of us aren't comfortable dealing with conflict when it happens especially when it happens at the work however conflict is natural and happens so we must learn to manage it whatever be disagreements and disputes learning how to manage can keep your personal and professional relationship strong and growing five keys of dealing with workspace conflict define acceptable behavior defining acceptable behavior is a positive step in avoiding conflict creating a framework for decision collaboration team building leadership development and talent management will all help avoid conflict hit conflict head on by actually seeking out areas of potential conflict and proactively interviewing in a decisive fashion you will likely prevent certain conflict from ever arising understanding the what's in it for me factor it is absolutely essential to understand others motivation prior to weaving in the way to avoid conflict is to help those around you achieving their objective the importance factor pick your battles and avoid conflicts for the sake of conflict however if the issue is important enough to create a conflict then it is surely important enough to resolve view conflict as opportunity hidden within virtually every conflict is a potential for a tremendous teaching learning opportunity where there is a disagreement there is an inherent potential for growth and development these are some tips for handling conflict at work talk privately listen to the other person acknowledge your similarities admit your mistakes be selective set a positive example consider the bigger picture focus on behavior not personality avoid escalating tension use a mediator conflict resolution skills must be developed and worked on over time once you master them you will find that you are happier and more productive in the workspace next topic is customer conversations Effective customer conversations are for building positive relationship, understanding customer needs and providing excellent service whether you are communicating in person over the phone through email or by social media. There are some tips for successful customer conversations. Active listening. Listen actively to what the customer is saying. Allow them to express their thoughts and concern fully before responding. Empathy Put yourself in the customer's shoes. Demonstrate empathy by acknowledging their feelings and expressing understanding. Clear communication. Use clear and concise language. Ask probing questions. Ask open-ended questions to gather more information about the customer's need or concern. Positive language. Use positive and affirming language. Frame responses in a way that focuses on solution rather than problem timely responses respond to customer inquiries promptly if a response will take time set clear expectations for when they can expect a resolution maintain professionalism professionalism contributes to a positive customer perception and help in de-escalating tense situations solution oriented approach focus on finding solutions to the customers problems rather than dwelling on the issues a solution oriented approach demonstrate your commitment to customer satisfaction so these are some uh, few tips for a successful customer conversation there are many other tips you can implement to so these are some few tips There are many other tips you can implement for the successful and effective customer conversation. Now, for effective customer interview, there are few tips which are focus on the problem. This is the first thing to understand before customer interview. Define customer archetypes means understand their roles. Develop an agile mindset. Agility will help keep the interview going to collect more relevant and meaningful information. Be prepared to listen and learn. Stay fully engaged in the conversation while ensuring you captured all the information. 
preferably conduct in person interviews phone calls and video chats as convenient but nothing replace face to face interviews next topic is interviewing skills interviewing skills are essential for both interviewers and candidates participating in the job interview if you want to find the best person for a job then it is essential that your interviews are thorough and well thought out as possible our judgments may be impacted by qualities and experiences that doesn't necessarily align with the role you are hiring for let's see some tips on conducting great interviews start slow safe and personal be sweet don't hammer make some questions open ended ask what you don't know let the interviewee wonder a bit but be careful don't send advanced questions be prepared find the overlooked listen carefully so this was the last slide of persuasion and influence in skill topic soon i will be pasting all the topic links which will help you to understand this topic thanks for watching